guys, I'm I'm specially excited about this session. We've got two incredible filmmakers. Um, they couldn't be th their films couldn't be more dissimilar. And yes, and yet um, I think that there's there's some very solid um, sort of similar strings. There's very solid parallels, which I think we'll um, hopefully explore. Uh, please allow me to welcome Reema Das and Zoya Akhtar. Thank you, Zoya. Thank you. Come. Wherever you like. You know, I, when when um, when this when this session was uh, suggested, I thought it was a great idea, and I was like, but but I have, we have to find we have to find reason, and, and that reason has to be more than the fact that you're just you know two women filmmakers. It has to be more than that. And here's my observation, and please feel free to throw it right out of the window. I th I feel like on the one hand, you're a, you're a, you're couldn't be more uh, dissimilar in that. Uh, Zoya, you work within the system, so so to speak, uh, and, and I say that broadly. Uh, you work in Bollywood. You make Hindi films, Hindi commercial films with big stars. Rima, you are as indie as it gets. You shoot your own films. You write your own films. You you direct them. You produce them. You edit them yourself. Um, and yet, the the films that you make are so deeply personal. I really do feel that that. They're, they're broad stories, they're, they're, uh, no, they're accessible stories, and they're still extremely personal. And of course, you, uh, you, you work in your, uh, you know, in your own village, and you tell stories which are absolutely rooted in the, in the landscape. Fair to say, you think? Fair, uh, w w is that a, uh, yeah? Yeah, and I, we just discovered uh, that both our first films didn't work also. Ah. So that's <laughs> another. Right. You know, um, Village, I'm, I'm, Reema, of course, made Village Rockstars previously, which was India's entry to the Oscars, and her latest film is Bulbul Can Sing, which screened yesterday, and which won the national award um, yesterday for for best Assamese film. Thank you, sir. You know, if we just spoke about if we just spoke about Village Rockstars and and Gully Boy, uh, both films talk about the fact that um, reality is very harsh. And still, if you have, uh, you know, if you have drive and if you have passion and you have love, you can actually, uh, you know, I, this is me trying to find parallels. Uh, here. So, so that, that's the other sort of parallel I found. Um, have you have you watched each other's work? Are you have you are you familiar with? Yes. Yeah. I've seen uh, Village Rock Stars, and I think you're right because uh, both the films have um, have somewhere an underlying sense of self belief. Right. And. Uh, I think uh, it's a little more magical mm. with Village Rockstars, a little more, uh, you know, just put it out there in the universe and it'll come back to you kind of thing. But it's, uh, it's the same, it's self-belief. Have you, have you watched Joya's films, Rima? Yes, I, I watched Joya's film. I really loved it because I think it's not easy, uh, mainly how she met, uh, like, performing Ranveer and Joya, uh, sorry, <laughs> Uh, Alia. Alia. Yes, it's not easy because, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Although she was saying that she's a bit commercial side, and I'm doing more, I think, I don't know, I, where I, uh, I need to categorize myself for. But uh, I can understand what she's doing, why she's doing. Mm. Uh, still, uh, it's uh, such a beautiful film and uh, and it's also important that if the director knows like what she is going to bring through yeah. her film and right. her stories, her characters, uh, that's more important and I think she has done it very beautifully. Sure. Yes. You know, I want to ask, uh, Zoya, you grew up in Mumbai, um, born to, to parents who work in the film industry. Uh, Rima, you grew up in Chaigao in, uh, in Assam, which is, which is also where your stories are set. How were films an integral part of, of both your lives? Um, apart from, of course, inheriting it, uh, when did you find yourself drawn to it, in your case? And, and, did you, and was access to cinema um, easy? In, in, in for me, no. It just I am born and brought up in that. I grew up in that same village, uh, village Roxas and Bulbul, both are shot. And uh, we, I am from a childhood. I am always interested uh, in acting, not like film making movies. It's like we are from a place where movies are to be 
watched, not to be made, you know, no one is there around to guide the, and I, I we are uh, like uh, mostly watching Bollywood films and this huge, you know, I had no idea how to, how to make and so I came to Mumbai and then almost six years I was looking for acting job. Still my, like that time my English Hindi was so poor, I, I was so nervous. And, but it, fortunately, I got exposed to world cinema. Then when I started watching world cinema, then So that I, came after, that came after your… Later, okay. much later, yes. I think 2007, uh, then I started watching, then I thought, okay, I, I think probably I can also make films. So then I bought a camera, then I just started, that's it. So, yeah, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes when you inherit something, it can be something that you reject completely because it's something that's expected of you or it's something that your parents sort of tell you, you must do this, you must watch cinema. Um, when, uh, did you sort of gravitate towards, towards cinema just early on, immediately? I mean, it was, um, it, it was in our lives. So, there was no concept of, uh, uh, it, it was part of growing up. Right. It, I don't ever remember... Uh, life without the movies mm. and my parents are not the kind to tell us to do anything sure. I mean they just wanted us to be educated and that was it but besides that healthy happy they're fine they, so there was no do this don't do this do that and there was nothing we just it was just part of who we were we loved the movies um, and we watched everything and then my mum went to FTII after, because she was a child star, right, she was yeah. an actor, yeah. so she stopped acting, I mean, uh, she stopped yeah. working when we were born, she was very young, mm -hmm. and then she decided she wanted to make movies, so she went, so we used to go uh, and spend the weekend with her, wow. actually, so we started watching a lot of world cinema, she had a projector, mm -hmm. so we used to get prints from the theatres in those days, so my, one of my earliest memories is watching Godfather on my dining room wall, so it was just part of our lives, so yeah. um, I don't remember the world without movies. Right. Rima, do you remember one film, or because you were being, an, because you wanted to be an actor, one actress that you looked at and, and, and you know, who inspired you and you felt like that's the kind of career I'd like to have, that's what I'd like to do. I mean, was there a film that changed your life or an actress that changed your life? Uh, to become an actor? Yeah, perhaps, yeah. Not really. I think I was never sure about it. Okay. You know, I, because... Uh, I'm coming from Assam and uh, only after access to internet things are like, you know, we uh, like better and otherwise we also didn't know about the director. We are mostly, uh, we used to know about the actors, heroes, okay, Amitabh Bachchan, Shah Rukh Khan and, you know, Madhuri Dixit. But I... I, I don't know, but yes, I loved uh, all the old heroines uh, like uh, Meena Kumari, then Nutan, then later on Tabu, mm. Kajol, you know, so it, it was like depends on, I, I was not in that position to sh choose right. and uh, whatever was available, uh, that's it. And when I landed up in Mumbai, then so it is like a different world. Yeah. <laughs> seems like it seems like a page out of luck by chance, actually. It's, it's so wild because one of my closest collaborators uh -huh. uh, is called Rima, and she's from Assam. Right. So it's like for me, like it's like okay, we need to work together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was there a moment for for each of you? Was there a moment when you knew that? Um, that you wanted to make films or was there a film that, that made you feel like I really want, you know, you watch a film and go, I really, this is my expression, I, I want to make a film. Was there one moment or one film that, that gave you that empowerment? Uh, me, when I saw Pathir Pachali, yeah. Satyajit Ray and Children of Heaven, then mostly the Iranian films later on, then that is, I think, I thought that is the simplicity and also I realized that for me it's not possible I make a movie in Mumbai. I can go back <laughs> to my village and at least I can make movies. 
Okay. You know, that's so. I remember watching this Those two films. films. For yeah. me, it was uh, Salam Bombay. Mm. Because uh, I want, I mean, I love the movies, but then, like the 80s and early 90s, the movies were so bad yeah. that I was like, <laughs> they were just awful. And I was like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I was a kid, you know, so in my head, uh, if you had to make movies, you had to do this. And, um, and of course, the foreign films, like, no one's going to watch them. And then I went to the cinema and I saw Salam Bombay and it just blew my mind. And I was like, this is shot in my backyard. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is like my turf. And uh, I can make whatever I want. And that, that flip of, you know, you can do whatever you want mm. happened with Salam Bombay. And, like, I try to make the films I want to watch, right. whatever they are, because my range is... Like the kind of movies I watch have a large, uh, you know, spectrum. So I want to make all that now. Yeah. But you know, it feels like Gully Boy is um, not, you know, Dovsit's hat to Salam Bombay. Was, was it a big influence? Salam Bombay is a huge influence in my life. Yeah, definitely. And I uh, did see bits of it again before I was uh, seeing uh, Gully Boy. And it's got a beautiful mise en scene uh, mm. in it. So, uh, and it was shot in the slum and stuff. So you want to watch all the stuff that was done there mm. uh, to see how it was done and also to see what not to rip. Right. You know, what, right. what to avoid, you know, in the sense like you don't want it to be similar, mm. uh, even subconsciously. But it's a huge, that, that film is beautiful. Right. Reema, what gave you the confidence that, that these stories, these beautiful stories about people that you know and about things that you know and about a world that you know would, would have a wider appeal and have a, have a wider interest? That people would care about um, those little kids who carve, uh, you know, carve instruments out of thermocol yeah. um, or, or, or the, you know, the girl in, in Bulbul can sing. Um, what, what kind of, you know, coming from, um, from Assam, coming from that small village, not having access to cinema and then saying, I will make a film. Uh, wh what gives you the confidence to, to, to set out and say, that's the story I want to tell and people will watch? Uh, although I'm not from any film school, but I studied like I watched from very carefully and I was wondering and the beginning I was very much sure that I'm not making right now any commercial movie I am going that side like sending my movies to film festivals and also I didn't want a very art house kind of film uh, it should like also general you know audience they should also enjoy the film so I wanted that balance also so I, I was very carefully what like Asghar Faradi and these people doing and what uh, and also whenever I'm making one thing I was there in Cannes 2016 and I was like there was a uh, producer's workshop so one gentleman I don't remember his name but he said that eat local and think global. So I remember that. <laughs> so when I was making, then also like it is, I always wanted to enjoy the process of filmmaking because I realized this is what I am enjoying the most, not acting. You know, although I was desperately wanted to become heroine maybe in Mumbai, but I, I never worked hard. But when I started making movies, first uh, initially short films or later on, then I realized that I'm working hard. I'm really watching movies very carefully. So then I thought uh, when I started writing my own films, then I realized what to do. Like then it, I think it's very subjective. Also, it also depends on yeah. like your how what you as an individual your taste of like uh, kind of things you love. And then I uh, I was more than audience. I was thinking like uh, the scenes, the moments, create moments. I love. I enjoy. Right. You know characters. I love. So that's how, that's very simple. I, I was not thinking very too many things, but also, yeah, also relevant also this festival's film, like, uh, like I started also traveling, watching more and more films in the festival. That also, I think, helped me. Now, I want to talk to you both about your first films. Zoya, you had worked um, on, on, 
as an AD on, on several projects before you actually made Dil Chata Hai, uh, uh, luck by chance, you actually did work on Dil Chata Hai, uh, as the first AD. Um, you'd worked with Mira Nair, you'd worked with, um, in, in, in America as well uh, as an assistant. Um, was, it, was it frustrating, I know I, I asked you this briefly, when, you've, um, you know, when you have worked and when you, when you know the craft and you've written the script, um, it took you many years to make what I think everyone in this room will agree was a beautiful film and, and deeply affecting and I still think your best film actually. Um, is, does it get, um, was it heartbreaking, was it frustrating? Uh, and then I'm going to ask Rima. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, because it took me seven years and uh, six actors that said uh, no uh, and you couldn't get that film made on that budget without a lead man and... Uh, Why were they saying no, Zoya? Because that there were no grey areas at that point. Right. You know, this is 10 years ago, there was no grey zone. So, uh, they just didn't, like, some people were very clear, they didn't want to be, uh, uh, you know, they didn't want to play a character that's morally uh, ambivalent. Right. Uh, I think one or two of the actors just didn't get the film at all. Right. Like, I don't think they just understood it, you know. So, uh, you can't blame them. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just that, that, you know, is it going to work, is it not going to work, is it a bit artsy, it was that kind of vibe, you know, and then you watched Did you ever second guess your own script um, as a result of that? No, I was very cocky. I'm not that <laughs> cocky anymore. Like now, I maybe would be like, what's wrong with the script, but at that time I was just like, what's wrong with you? You know, so <laughs> oh, I think good. somewhere, that's, yeah. That held you in good stead, I think yeah. It, I think it protected me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Rima, what was the first film like? I mean, you know, um, we, also you were you had chosen to shoot in 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 the village where there weren't professional actors. You were you, um, what was that like? Sort of, you know, training them, bringing a filmmaking culture to a little village in Assam. Um, was was it hard? No, it was not hard. <laughs> it was hard, uh, like uh, in the beginning, but later uh, maybe I didn't do anything in acting, but actor in like inside me I think helped me a lot and uh, also Mumbai taught me a lot because when I uh, in my struggle days what I realized like uh, for me like not acting is the best acting and uh, also when you are not conscious you know so I was very conscious in Mumbai I always in my school like used to be like best actor most of the time, but when I was in Mumbai, I was conscious, these auditions, you know, everything, you may, then, then when I was working with my actors, I, I gave them this freedom and that space, I never made them feel okay, you know, you are in pressure. So that is what followed and the b most, I think, beautiful, uh, the, what helped me uh, because when I was giving audition, there are lines, it's, as an actor you are not comfortable, so when I write, I, I say the lines myself first, right. if I'm comfortable then only I give to my actors, that, so these are the… You so. had a bunch of really lovely um, child actors in, in Village Rockstars and again in uh, slightly older in, in Bulbul Can Sing. Um, what was that like sort of training them? Did, also, did they enjoy being in front of the camera? Was that something they, um, they took too easily? They enjoyed because I am like they don't care, you know. The, with me, I am also not bossy, so they are, we are very f like a friends. And there is a small camera, it's just like this. Right. So it's a f uh, village boxes were shot in Canon 5D Mark II. Bulbul was this Sony A7S II. So there, there is no one except my cousin sister. She's doing sound with the Zoom <laughs> H4N. That's that is what is there. So they don't, they didn't care much. But they are very much aware shooting is going on. But they are part of it, you know. They yeah. are like, okay, she is a director, we are also director, kind of. <laughs> that kind of attitude they have. So we had fun. So it's, I think that way it helped. How long did you take to shoot the film? Village Texas took me almost three and a half years because I was not sure, you know, that I can direct, a, I can do a feature film autonomously. So it took me three and a half, but Bulbul, I think, Eight months, yeah, yes. 
You know, Zoya, it, it's also true that um, both your films are very, very observational. Um, hers, of course, because it's it's true to the world it's in, and she's um, drawing so much from who those people really are. And and yours, I, I, I'm sorry, I keep I, I, I don't know why. Uh, it's I don't stuck mind in if my head. think I made Dil I'm Chata, so sorry. It's, okay. like, it's stuck <laughs> in my head. Um, no, luck by chance. It's it's it is really so observational. It's it's so true of the world that you knew inside out. Um, was that were you ever worried because that can happen with with um, when you know the world very intimately and when it's a world that's um, that that is insular that it not become an insular kind of film that that um, it do, it doesn't just become in jokes uh, that they play uh, for for a you know for an audience to understand as well. Uh, I mean, I was aware of that when we were writing it. There were so many um, crazy things that happened in the industry and so many uh, loopy characters that, you know, you can't put it in because nobody will believe it. Mm. So you have to, you know, you can't, it, 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 like certain incidents seem almost like you're spoofing it. So we had, and they're actually true, but you don't put it in. So I was very aware of where it was and I kept it, um, uh, I kept it to, like for me, the film is about self-esteem. Mm. The film is about uh, people and how they view themselves and how they regard themselves and what that uh, self-belief or self-view, uh, how does that affect your destiny, you know? Um, and uh, that was what the film was about. So I kept it mainly to human behavior and to that and the rest was the industry. Right. And I mean, at the end of the day, if I'm watching a movie on any, uh, uh, if I'm behind the scenes of a cop station, or I'm I want to know more than I already know. Right. I want the inside workings, right. because that's the point of it, you know? I mean, it's an insider's view, yes. That's right. why it's different. Right. So that's why I wanted to do that. So I wasn't very worried. I was careful in the beginning. I was aware when I was writing, writing it, it, but then, no. Also, you created such beautiful characters, you know, Romy, Rolly, the, the, the oily producer, yeah. uh, and, the, uh, and the heroine's mum, that dimple character, I thought it was, yeah. it, it was, it really cut close to the bone. It, it really felt, uh, felt very, very real. Um, to both of you, what's your writing process like? Um, is, is, it, is it very lonely? Um, I, I know you write with, uh, I, I with write a partner. With Rima. Uh, do you write alone, Rima? Do you, 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 I know yeah, you write I your write own. I write alone. Is it very yes. lonely? Does it take a lot of time? Sometimes, uh, it's, these two films I didn't even write, this is like, I can only understand what I'm writing. Right. And my three films, I never given script to my actors. I don't like to actually, I think in future I have to, that is fine. But uh, I write, I love characters. So first I create my characters, then scenes, then I kind of, plots, my subplots, so I just write back and through. So when shooting these two films, so I keep shooting sometimes, maybe I'm shooting my first scene later, you know, yeah. so I edit also, I edit and I go back, so, but now collaborating with producers, so I'm writing. Right, because producers Actual want to writing. see a bomb script, right, yes. right. So your writing process? For me, I have to, I have to know what I want to feel at the end. Right. I have to know, um, the reason I'm making this film is the last scene. Ah. Uh. To me. So what is that? What am I, what am I saying? And what is the feeling, why, that feeling that I feel, mm. which is why I want to make this movie, mm. uh, and I want to transmit, it, I have to know that. Once I know that scene, because like Luck by Chance started because of the world and it was mine, or mm. Zindagi was like, I love road trips and they're cathartic, or Dil Dhar Akhtendo came out of like, you know, we project so much, mm. even with the closest people, even with your family, yeah. nobody's honest, everyone's just projecting. projecting right. You know, so at the end of the day, I want to know the end this is why I'm making the film, and mm. then it has to go backwards. And I love characters. I love, the weirder the character, the more I love them. <laughs> so yeah, but I have to know the end. Do you have bouncing boards to both of you when you write? Um, do, you, do you run it past someone, or do you just fly with what you think is the best version of the characters yeah. and the script? I just do myself till now, yes, doing. Is that because, because, you, because you don't have uh, people in your immediate circle that are mm, film literate? Maybe also because of that and when I made my first film I had a small crew and later on like 
during the editing time, you know, few people, they watched it and they give you their comments and you get so confused. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> then with Village Oxes and Bulbul, I just, I just did what I like, that's it. Is that do, do, do. Ending, they won't, they are not going to understand this and that. So, even later on, some people say village rockstars, okay, we were, why you gave the name village rockstars? We yeah. thought there will be music and this, she will be some kind of rock star rock or concert, something. Right. Why you ended just like that, you know? So, but I love to do that. I, I don't like very conventional way to end my films. Even life is not conventional, you know? True. So Do, does it then require just, and this is to both of you, does it then require just a lot of conviction if you're not going to listen to, to the surround sound? You just have to believe in it and, and go with it. Um, and is that something that, that, that you can afford because you're almost no budget That's filmmaking? That's true. I think for me, yes, I had nothing to lose. I'm the producer, I'm everything. So I think that was also the reason for me. No, it's, a, it's different because... Um, the wider, like you have a budget, uh, you are having a massive theatrical release and you want a wider audience yeah. to watch it. So the wider you want the audience to watch it, the more they have to get it. Right. You know, uh, but what I do is I have focus screenings. Right. So uh, I know what I want my film to be and uh, but I, like, so what I'll do is I'll try things. If I feel the length is too long, I'll pull, have you all seen Gully Boy? Yeah. Okay, so let me talk to you in terms of yeah. examples. So in Gully Boy, we wanted to edit stuff. So what we took out was we took out the jail scene right. of Moin and Murad. And I showed it to a couple of people and they were like, we didn't like the fact that Murad stole. And there was no repercussion, it bothered us. Mm. I put the scene back in and it, it, people were crying. Mm. And they, didn't, they suddenly understood it and they felt like, so you know, you have to, uh, get feedback like people say weird things like one somebody will get up and say at the end I wanted him to have his own bathroom I mean you're not going to listen to that rubbish <laughs> you know so you're like okay uncle next film but you're not going to listen to that but when you have a reaction that's across the board in six to seven screenings you know there's a problem in seven screenings if people tell you I didn't get the end you should take listen to that because there's something wrong. Right. But one ran, like it was very strange with Gully Boy because we have ma male screenings and female screenings. All the women, all the female screenings were like, it wasn't cool that he cheated across the board. And all the male screenings were like, but we also would. <laughs> so you're like, okay, but I would. You know what I mean? So you're just like, okay, let them battle it out. I'm leaving it. <laughs> so you, 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 you take that kind of feedback, but you know the general which way, what to ignore, what not to ignore. I, right. And it's been extremely helpful to me in my movies. Right. Um, Rima, is there, uh, is, is there a desire to, to work um, with actors, with, with professional actors? Yes, of course, yes. I did my first film with professional actors only. Also in Village Roxas there was one. In Bulbul, that Bonnie's mother, who is right. playing, she's, uh, yes, professional actor, uh, like, 20 years working probably and definitely and now I just made a short film they're also my main protagonist is professional so it's nothing like that but only uh, I would like my actress to surrender completely right <laughs> yeah. do you have that as, as well Zoya? do you do you expect them to surrender to the vision completely I mean, I've been very lucky. I've been very lucky. I've, I've worked with actors that have been as excited about the project uh, as I am. Mm. So, um, I've never had a struggle. That's never been a conflict. Right. Yeah, I've never had a struggle. I, um, I don't know how that would be, you know. I, I, uh, I don't know how that would turn out for me. I can't promise uh, being sweet. <laughs> I don't know, I've never, I, I mean, I've really been lucky with my acting. You know, you've made now two films with, uh, with Ranveer as your, as, your, as your leading man, and he's just such an exciting actor. He's just absolutely, um, and, and he really gets under the skin in Gully Boy. It's really hard to tell. Yeah, um, for it, him, it, it's, it's impossible very to kind of, uh, you know, d 
sort of remove the Ranveer from the from the Murad Watts. I mean, um, what was your sort of relationship with him like? When I mean, was this something that was built over from from with with the last experience? Ranveer and me have known each other back in the day. Oh, we really? We were both Bandra kids, and I mean, he's younger than me, and uh, we we knew each other from the time both of us were trying to do what we do. Uh, so um, I've known him forever, you know, and uh, it's. Uh, yeah, he's 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 a friend, you know, and he's a, he's a very professional actor. But I'm extremely comfortable with him, and uh, I um, I'm not worried. Like the minute we get into sync and we're on the same page, mm. he cares about it as much as I do, right. and uh, I don't have to worry on that level. He does so much work, you know. He's so um, he's immersed. So it's just. Uh, you, you're not, it's exciting right. to work with him. You know, you, it was, he, um, I, I don't know about Gully Boy, but it, I don't think it's a secret that on, on Zindagi, um, on uh, Dil, Dil Dharak Mein though, he wasn't, he, you, you'd spoken to a few actors before or, or one actor before. When you, um, was that written for another actor or did you just go to another actor first? It was written for another actor. Then, um, is, it, is it difficult to imagine another? Not at all. <laughs> I have moved on from that. <laughs> Gully Boy was the first film. Uh -huh. I wrote that my first choice of actor and actress said yes. Wow. I've never had that happen before and I have no issues with it. Now I've got a list. No, okay, next, next, next. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to make a movie whether you're in it or not. Great. So, yeah. That's wonderful. That's great. <laughs> Rima, uh, now that you're looking at, at, at making, um, I don't want to use the word bigger, but you know, um, um, a sort of... A, a, a less indie film. Um, what, what has been the reaction? Have you sp have you started speaking to actors? H have you written something that um, I find that a lot of filmmakers censor themselves at the writing stage because they 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 sort of I don't know if the word is no or assume that we're not going to get um, a certain a certain size of actor. Uh, have you ha have you allowed your imagination to fly? Have you allowed yourself to write exactly what you want to write? And have you started talking to actors? What's what's been your Mm, I'm not, I'm thinking, I'm also in India like with uh, which actors or heroes or uh, I can work with. For now, I'm writing something for to it uh, for Tilotoma Shome. Right. And, and she's a lovely actor, yeah. Yes, she is. And also there are some in my mind, let's see, yeah. Do you, you know, there was a time, and, and I think Zoya, you'll agree as well, um, there was a time when, you know, the film festival chap on a film, uh, if, if, you, if it's, a film it's a film that's won at a film festival, it's sort of the, 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 the general sort of industry reaction, oh, this is, this is art house. Um, and actors didn't necessarily, they, they already knew that this is not our kind of film. Has that attitude changed in, in, uh, since you've been meeting or talking to actors, producers? Has that attitude changed? Are you seen as someone who's exciting because you've been to all these film festivals and because your films have have, um, you know, have, have traveled in the way that they have? Or are you seen as, oh, she makes art house films, not our, um, you know, she won't be able to cross over. Is that, is that prejudice still there? Uh, with me? Like who are approaching me? Yeah. yeah. I, with me, no, not like that. Like, and uh, mostly now the producers I'm talking with, they are quite comfortable and open. They know how I make uh, my films and mostly I'm writing now, right. writing. So, so it hasn't got to that stage yet where you're meeting yes, actors it's yet? Yes, no, not yet, not yet. But I'm open. It's, it's, it is only the connections. If it happens, then there is no problem. Right. Only that understanding, I think that's important and I will always like, definitely I'll need a like-minded cinematographer. And apart from that, actors are, who are comfortable, uh, how to say it, like, it's, it's important that actors know uh, what is going behind the camera yeah. and the subtext behind this character. If they understand the character, I think I can work with any actors. That's not a problem. But are you looking forward to recruiting professionals for, for the technical jobs that you did uh, up until now? Are you looking forward to, re to relieving yourself of those responsibilities, a professional DOP and a professional... Yeah, DOP? I just uh, finished a short film it's, uh, for BRICS country. Right. So, all, it's a 
फुल प्रोफेशनल टीम लॉट्स ऑफ लाइट्स पूरे गांव को मतलब उजाला कर दिया ऑल मोन लिट आई सेड आई आस्ट हिम लाइक हाउ मेनी वट एवर यू वॉन्ट आई गेव हिम एंड इट वॉज लाइक एंड इन माई विलेज द कास्ट ऑफ बुलबुल विलेज रॉक्स दे आर लाइक ये देखो ये होता है शूट हम जो किया था वो क्या शूट था इट वॉज नॉट लाइक शूटिंग सी दिस इज शूटिंग सो दे आर लाइक वॉट शी इज डूइंग स्टील आफ्टर फिल्म लाइक गेटिंग नेशनल अवार्ड ऑल द एक्ट्स दैन स्टील दे थिंक लाइक यू नो समाइम्स बुलबुल कैन सिंग्स द माई बुलबुल्स फादर हु वॉज प्लेइंग आई आई वॉज टेकिंग यू नो रीटेक्स एंड आई आई शूड मोस्टली वन टू सीन्स और थ्री सीन्स मैक्सिमम ही इज लाइक नॉट एक्सपीरियंस शी इज सो टेकिंग सो मच if he or she a big director like two takes whole <laughs> so it's fun actually knowing these people and being there i think yeah you know so in one of your interviews you quoted meera nair um who's a filmmaker you worked with of course meera said if 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 you won't tell our stories who will uh, i i think she meant if we won't tell our stories who will now i i you know i understand what it must be like to constantly be asked um you know what it's like being women in a in a business that's that's um sort of male driven and i think that that's changed uh in in fact in that context i'd like to ask what has changed with now more women telling stories with more f- women um center stage with m- more women ha- r- getting opportunities to be able to direct and tell stories what w- what change has that led to the if, gaze if has changed mm. the uh the 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 hero on screen has changed mm. you know the man projected on screen has changed i mean when you see vicky koshal in razi yeah he's a beautiful character that's true you know and uh, i don't know how a man would have written or directed that mm. you know what she did with it but he's a beautiful character i think uh, women not only put their point of view i think and especially with us i think in india i think we put the men we want right, screen right you know we are trying to project we are, we are giving big hints yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. rima do you, do you feel like um there's been a change with the fact that there are no there are more women who are making films and telling stories that there there is a change yes because uh, still we are very few in hollywood still it is 4% and I we don't are, know in better. India. We are better. We are better. <laughs> okay. We are. We are have a better uh, yeah. ratio. So uh, yes, I think for me, if I consider you privileged, for us, like I think access to internet changed a lot, and this digital cameras also at uh, changed. I think and women uh, earlier, like we had to depend on. men for everything kind of you know mm-hmm. because they are more working now at least if you really want to the main important thing is like to create your how to own our own like space right. that's important and if you really we want to it's is the things that heroism thing is i think yeah. you know right. it's now characters are more real right Yeah. I want to ask you one more question and then I'll open it out to questions. Um so you already worked in the web space. You you um wrote, directed, produced uh, Made in Heaven and you're uh, currently scripting um part 2. You also um made uh lust stories and now you're doing ghost stories. Uh, Rima is that a space that you'd like to 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 work in the digital space and what um what freedom Zoya has that allowed you? Uh, and Rima what why would that be interesting to explore? yeah um I, i'm basically a storyteller yeah. and i'm happy to work in any medium you know so uh suddenly i can make a short film which was impossible before right. and that's amazing because certain ideas and stories lend themselves to that length mm. um you know uh, i watch a lot of shows and uh there is a certain uh space that comes with the long format there is a certain uh character 
creation and a development that you can't do in a movie. Right. That there are the themes that you can explore and the way you can build characters, you can't do that in a one and a half hour, two hour film. Right. So the long format really allows you thematically to do stuff. And uh, there's no censorship. That helps. And uh, the third thing is there's no box office pressure. Right. So you're really relieved, you know. It's a, it's a very different uh, headspace to work in. Mm. And um, I love it, you know. I mean, having said that, I, there's nothing that beats watching a movie on a big screen in a, in a theater. I mean, there, nothing beats that. But I want, I want everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Put it simply. <laughs> Rima? Is that, uh, do, you, do you see yourself making um, content for the web? Mm, not now. Maybe I'll take some more time. I, I want to make more movies. Yeah. Yes. But definitely maybe when I think about, okay, because I'm doing so many things myself, uh, but I know when we are making a web series, there will be more people, but can be, I think, then also it will be easier. Right. Yeah. But I definitely love to make more um, like films. So, yes. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Can we get um, smart questions? Huh? I've told them all. We're only getting. I've, I've, I've told them. I, I've, I've sold you guys to, to everybody here. Said we've got the smartest bunch today. Okay. The, the lady in the first row. Hey, Rajiv. Hello. Um, uh, hi, Zoya. Hi, Rima. Hi. Um, my name's Joey. Um, I'm actually originally from Bangladesh, and I've based, I'm a citizen of the world. So, my question to you both, uh, specifically Zoya, if possible, is when you are writing the base for a character, be it a web series, a movie, whichever platform, because as you just said, you want everything, right? That's a good thing, actually. <laughs> so, when you do work on the base of one character, what, what, what is the objective you work on for the base? Truth, I think. Honesty, I think uh, resonance with certain people. Um, uh, you, when you know where your character is, heading or who yeah. that character is. I don't think one size fits all. Yeah. But you want to create something that goes deeper than the surface, something that's a little more complex. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. You know, you want to create a, you want to create a, a psychology, basically, that uh, will definitely connect with some people in the audience. Yeah. Um, also, I just quickly wanted to say, while I do finish this, um, I've seen everything that you both do, and having said that, everything I've written has basically been influenced about how you write things. So I just want to really just thank you for that. Oh, thank you. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the lady in the red in the back, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, my question, it's actually an anecdote and leading to a question. So we Short. Were a, yeah, very short. Okay. We were at an Indian night in Melbourne, and we were a group of girlfriends. Um, just, it was easier for us to dance to girls like to swing than it would be to a Sheila, to, Sheila Ki Jawani. Um, my question for you is that um, when you direct a movie, do you consciously make an effort to keep your songs a particular way or keep your um, female characters a particular way? Or like almost like an Elizabeth Bennett kind of a strong personality in most of your female characters? Uh, I mean, uh, I'm definitely, um, I don't have to work that hard to be conscious of it. I think, uh, 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 I think it's, it comes quite organically to my co-writer and me, the kind of female characters we want to portray and um, how we want them to be. I think it's quite organic, like we don't have to, um, Work hard. And, and in terms of the music, it depends on the fabric of the film. 
It depends on the situation. It depends on the setting. It depends on the character, or what the sound will be, what the mood will be, or what they would be privy to. You know, so uh, it makes sense like that. You know, so it depends on where you are, and uh, the mood dictates. The mood and the situation dictates the kind of sound and lyric that comes in. But uh, yeah, I'm quite conscious of my female characters. I'm quite, I'm conscious of all my characters. I try to be at least. Okay, the gentleman exactly behind her, uh, or next to you, yeah, yeah. Hello, um, my name is Gagan. Um, I just want to know your opinion about uh, uh, audience, uh, you know, understanding and perspective, because um, the reason of my question is um, I'm a writer, and uh, I wrote a book, it's about, uh, you know, it, uh, about uh, India's first female superhero, and it became a bestseller in India. But when the reviews started coming in, the, the people were not, you know, very convinced about it. Like uh, they said, it doesn't sound realistic, a girl doing that. Then I asked them, uh, why is that? Uh, because she's Indian or you are Indian? So my question is, is our audience not ready for strong female characters? No, I, I don't believe that. I think we've had strong female characters since the 30s. Every decade has had films that have worked that, had, that were uh, female led or female protagonists or films that have worked that have had very strong female characters. So I don't believe that. I think it, it really depends on the movie and it depends on what it comes in. I, I, I think people are ready for stories that resonate. I don't believe that. Okay, yeah. Rima, Thank do you, you want to add to that? Yeah. Sorry? Do you want to add to that? Um, do you feel like... I think so. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the gentleman here in the front row. Yeah. Hi, it's Manoj from What's Up Oz. Uh, congratulations, uh, Zoya, on you know getting selected, uh, offered the membership by Oscar, uh, and Thank you. national award as well, Rima. Congrats. My question is: There's so much content for people these days to consume. How, when you make a script, what, how do you make sure it's relevant and you know it still ticks all the boxes? Because you you have been doing that. How, how do you do that for both of you, actually? Uh, you know, like, um, my dad told me that when you write something and you're making something, don't worry about will this person like it, that person like it. You worry about what you think is important to be said, what you have to say, and whether you like it. Because that way, one person is guaranteed in the audience. <laughs> you. So... <laughs> <laughs> Don't get into will this person, that person, what it, I mean, to be relevant, I think you need to listen. I think you need to hear. I think you need to read. I think you need to be aware of what's going on. Uh, you need to connect to the youth. I think you need to speak to people. Um, and I think you need to speak to young people without the attitude that you know more. I think you, a lot comes from there. Rima, do you want to add? Yes, like I think all kind of films they have audience, you know, so you, look, you watch Spider-Man also or <laughs> uh, like you're watching all kind of films, all genres. It is, as a director, I think how are you ready to tell this story and you are, it's convincing, then you believe when Harry Potter you are watching also you believe, you know, you started crying also. So it's just like that. Okay. Um, at the back. Hello, Zoya, ma'am. And Rima, Hello. Ma'am, uh, ma I'm a big fan of Gully Boy movie. <laughs> Gully you. Boy movie has inspired us so much that when we have struggle and hard times, we were like, apna time aayega. <laughs> and when we were struggling for part-time or full-time jobs, we were like, apna time aayega. <laughs> and in Melbourne, we do chota mota short films and dance videos, and we are trying to showcase our talent. So what advice do you give for young and upcoming filmmakers? Like any particular advice which inspires us from you and Rima ma'am? I mean, you have to hang in there. You have to keep doing it. I mean, you are, when I, when I started, when I started wanting to make a film and had to wait, I honestly did not have the technology you have today. So you can make a film. Don't wait for anyone, just make a movie. I mean, speak to her. She just yeah. made a movie, won three national awards. Now the fourth yesterday. So you should take advice from her, actually. Yeah. Rima? Yeah, just do it. And uh, if you have passion to do it, you just 
can do it. And we are in a, this is like best time, I think, you know, you can get access uh, to anything. So I think this is the best time. You can also create your own channel. You can also make a movie with a mobile a phone. Yeah, on your phone. Yeah, I mean, so you, you are... It's the best. It's all there, you know, so uh, don't, don't wait on it. Just tell stories. Thanks, ma'am. The lady here. Hi, um, my name's Kalthar. I'm a filmmaker as well. Um, I want to congratulate you for your films and Zoya, you're an inspiration. You're my mirror and air. Um, so I guess just a bit of a context in Australia, um, there's this talk about diversity and inclusion and representation being authentic. Um, and one of the things that I've kind of explored is cultural consultancy. Um, I just want to understand whether, you know, that's something that you take, I guess, as a, you know, maybe as part of research, do you consult with a community or, you know, if, you, if you're kind of writing about a community or someone or a topic that you don't have a direct um, relationship with, do you consult with people from that community? Absolutely. And how is that process? Does the rest of the industry do that? Like, how does it work? I'm just I mean, curious. I can't speak for anyone else. And um, I mean, from what I see, that there are people that definitely do and there are people that don't. You know, from their work, you can kind of guess. But uh, uh, I, I do do that, and I do that for um, varied reasons. Uh, one is uh, when we write. Um, we need to create a richer world. So it's a very selfish uh, motivation to get in there and to spend that time and to speak to people and to research it because you want that fodder to be able to create something fresh. And uh, secondly is because you do not ever want to disrespect anyone. Uh, uh, because if you're looking to represent somebody or a particular community, or a particular type of person, or, a, or anything, you know, a sexuality, a handicap, or whatever, you know, uh, you want to, uh, you need to be dignified about it, and you need to have that respect for it. So you have to do that anyway. So you do it for yourself, and you do it for them. You have to do it. So just say, just as like for women, um, you're both such inspirations. Personally for me, after watching Luck by Chance and um, Kiran Rao's Mumbai Diaries, that's when I actually enrolled in documentary filmmaking. So thank you and I hope to see more of your work. Thank you. Thank you. The lady there. The lady there. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Zoya, to echo her, I want to say I think Luck by Chance is one of the best films ever. And I mean thank ever, you. ever. It has a, one of the best endings ever. And I also want to thank you for how you shot Anushka Sharma and Dil Dharak Nainu, the way she gets out of the pool. It wasn't sleazy at all, it just, and it served the story, so thank you for that. My question for you is, what's your take on item numbers in Bollywood today? Because it kind of seems to get worse rather than disappearing. <laughs> you know, I am really of the belief uh, that uh, you don't have a right to censor anything. So uh, I, I'm of that belief. So uh, I, if, when I look at a promo, I see a trailer, and if I don't like it, or it makes me uncomfortable, I don't watch it. Uh, I can't tell anyone what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Uh, I feel like we, we instead of uh, censorship, I think we should have a, a certain, um, what do you call, um, certification is yeah. the word? Yeah. A certain kind of certification, uh, which says that people above this age can watch this or not. And I think that I would recommend something like that. But, uh, you know, uh, each to their own. The lady next to you, yeah. Hi, Zoya. Uh, Hi. This is Sri. I just have a very specific question about Gali Boy. Loved it, loved the music. Why was it necessary for Murat's father to have a change of heart at the end? Uh, I, I don't think, you know, I'll tell you, the change of heart happened after the son made it. Yeah. And the change of heart will happen after you make it. I mean, it would be very silly if the fa son made it and the father still saying you won't make it. Uh, you know, so uh, uh, the change of heart, when, you know, when, you, when he talks to his son, uh, that's the first time. You, you've seen this man and he's a brute. 
you know he's he's a bully and he's the man of the house and he's this dominating presence and then you realize in that last scene that he's been so crushed in the yeah. world you know he's been so beaten this is his one space where he calls the shots and he is so scared he's so scared that his son is not going to toe the line and it's going to go wrong and not, you know this one little shot he's got at a white collar job is not going to happen you know and when so he's scared but at the end we don't go into what happens after the co contest yeah. so time has passed and when he's on stage the father's obviously emotional because mm -hmm. he's made it yeah i mean just he being a valiant man and seeing him like you know at the end like everything falls into place it just seemed a little out of place for me because he being sure. such a bad man throughout the film yeah. and suddenly he just like you know he gets back to the life and everyone accepts him like even his wife his son that just felt a little out of place for me the rest of it was great thank you <laughs> thank you the lady here hi my name is mulina my question Hello. to you both of you is uh, being female filmmakers do you consciously put your that kind of uh, hat on or whatever to make a movie or do you consciously sort of move away from that say I, I, I am a woman but I also am making a movie which is has to appeal to the wider audiences or has to make money commercially so you sort of have that other perspective as well I don't really you know to tell you the truth when I'm working I'm my gender is like really not on my mind <laughs> I mean I don't have anything to compare it to this is it i've always been a woman <laughs> i just like i know i mean it's like yeah, no it's like i'm writing a scene i can't be like okay let's not be a woman and then what am i going to be <laughs> uh, it doesn't come up for me like i don't know yeah i i yeah <laughs> now you know prima yeah i just uh, i also don't think that way in only if the characters if i feel like okay this is a story i want to tell that's it i think yeah gentleman in the front row yes you hi so hi oh. rima love the work um praise is all over whether it is a gully boy or a bulbul can sing this question is for both you all um is there an added pressure for you being a woman and storytelling no any what pressure that you're a woman in storytelling because whether it is a gully boy which is a massive hit commercially bulbul can sing which is a national award winner so when you make your next project will there be an added pressure whether people are going to like it or kind of you know but that is genderless pressure i mean it's not like guys don't feel like what my next film is going to be okay. that's i think that i think that that is that is uh, i think that happens to any filmmaker or artist like am i going to be better am i going to no, okay. you know screw this up i don't think that's got anything to do with our gender perfect well very much do you want to add to that uh, yeah it's like a pressure in the sense when uh, village success was a success then and i made another film bulbul you know so soon so family and friends they were worried you know that pressure is there but it is not a kind of a mechanical thing right it is uh, so i cannot stop that flow so finally what i am doing i am enjoying and uh, that's more important yeah okay we have time for one last question and this lady will get that question yeah. i'm deepa i'm from biscuit show time um like my peer she is a fellow uh, you know filmmaker i myself i'm a filmmaker in fact we both have been winners at the film um and you know how you said women portray things differently or naturally the way they want to see the society that might bring a radical change what note of encouragement do you have for fellow filmmakers who are actually wanting to just go out there you know and burst the bubble if they are in a bubble and burst the bubble if if they are still thinking you know there's some kind of limitation there's something that's stopping them and they might just let that dream, dream die of being a filmmaker like what a note of encouragement would you have like you know how rajiv sir said it's still a male dominated you could perceive it being a male dominated how can we bring that or neutralize it, it yeah okay yeah it's so to neutralize it you know how can we encourage more filmmakers to actually come out whether it be digital platform or anything do you have any note to add to that I think the first thing you should do is just tell yourself it is not male dominated. Exactly. It's not it's dominated by good artists mm -hmm. or artists that connect to many people. Don't 
tell yourself this. Mm -hmm. Tell yourself that the world is your oyster. You know, I mean, to, like I said today, you don't need anyone to validate you to make a film. And you are in the best time. Like, I, I'm telling you, I came from a space where we had to write a script. We had to go out. We had to meet producers. or Because it was, film was a medium, it was an expensive medium. And you needed that money, and you, which means you needed funding, which means you needed an actor, which it, it was, or you know, you don't need any of that now. So just change the thinking. I think that definitely answers to anybody who's still thinking about it. She's, yeah. she should, she's the one to ask this to, yeah. yeah. Do, you want to, do you want to add to that? I think it just, uh, earlier also I said, uh, you know, you just have to own your space. That's it. That's it, I think. And it's all individual. You, you want to do it, you love your life, you want to do it, you do it. Just don't think about others. And let me tell you, we keep saying male-dominated, but my journey is like when Village Rockstar is a success, so many men, they are coming, even the male directors, they come to me, Rima, you are doing the best thing, we are inspired by you, you know. So I don't think, uh, I don't think, uh, like think and see that way, you know. They are always supportive. If you are uh, st strong and uh, then I think no one can stop. Okay, then we're going to give this young lady one last question, and that is it. Thanks so much, Zoya. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say to both of you, tremendous congratulations Thank on you. achieving what you have. Thank both you. of you are incredible. Both of you are amazing role models. I'm an actress. I'm based here. And I think it's inspiring to see the work that you're doing and to learn from that. I think a lot of filmmakers will learn that. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment here that I think women directors and Indian women directors are amazing storytellers, probably one of the best. And I think we need to acknowledge that. Your series Made in Heaven was amazing. I think each, I don't know how many people have seen this here, but it was very well received, was Thank you. loved. Is there a sequel coming for that? Yes, we are currently writing it. We plan to shoot that in January. Oh, tremendous. Yeah. That's all I wanted to ask. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zoya. Thank, thank you, you so Rima. much. Thank you. Thank this, you. This was a thank lovely you, session. Thank you so much. Thank you.